Prepping Family, Tasha, Mama Bear Prepping. Let me fix that for you. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I hope you enjoy yourself and I hope that you enjoy the content and come back and visit us. Okay, so today we're just going to talk a little bit about salt, you guys. So how do you store salt for long-term storage is what we're going to talk about today, okay? And I'm going to just go over how we store it, okay, which is in multiple um, ways, okay? And then I'm just going to give you some pros and cons of what some people do and, and what might not work, and it really depends on where you live and that type of thing, okay? So when it comes to storing salt, um, it's very basic. If I'm storing it long, long term, I'm going to my go to, go to um, bucket, right? This one is actually full, right? I'm actually taking my, my bucket and I'm taking all my different salts, you guys. So I'm just going to go through some, just going to show you some ice cream salt, some pink salt. I showed you the ko kosher salt. Here's a seasoning salt. Here's another garlic salt. Um, pickling salt and just, you know, regular salts. I have all sorts of stuff in here. Some sea salt. Okay. So the number one way that I store this is I get my five gallon bucket and I keep my salt in its original container and I put it in that bucket and I seal it away. Now the trick with salt is, um, one, you've got to get it in your preps because it's super important. Um, you'll you'll die. We need a certain um, amount of salt in our everyday diet. Now, the, the reason why it's taken for granted is because there's so much food that we buy that's already processed that already has super high levels of salt in it, okay? And so when you are, you know, thinking about long-term storage, sometimes people don't think about that because, um, you know, oh, I don't, I don't, you, I don't even put salt on anything. Well, that's because a lot of things that we already eat are already salted and you just don't realize it. But if you were to take away, like stop eating that stuff, stop eating processed foods and this all of a sudden you're eating your very plain, boring foods that are raw form. Okay. So like beans and rice, like we're talking about pasta, stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of times that you're not going to get your salt content that you need. Okay. And just to help you out, you guys, when you're looking at, um, I would challenge you to start looking at your foods. Salt is also called sodium. So just start looking at the things that you, um, eat, right? Things that you prepared, whether they're already done in a can, a soup, whatever. You'll often hear people say like, oh, the sodium's through the roof. That's salt, okay? But you're going to want to make sure you have this um, salt in your preps because we might get to a point where obviously supply chains start to break down. We're not getting processed foods anymore. We're having to rely on our bulk stores and you're going to need salt as part of your diet to live, okay? Now, I normally just put it right in the bucket and the, 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 the trick is just that it's a, an airtight container. Okay. So that could be many things. Now, most salt these days does come in some sort of plastic. Like this is a plastic, plastic, this feels like plastic, but it's actually just a plastic top and there's cardboard and you know, you can get the old um, fashioned salt, right? That comes in the cardboard, kind of like this one, right? This is cardboard. Now, this is the thing. A lot of people will tell you do not store in the original containers, especially if it's cardboard, because over the years, it will break down. Now, if any moisture does get its way, finds its way into that humidity and such, then yes, that will be a brick. When you open it up, it's going to be all gooey and gumpy. You're going to see the moisture on it and it's going to be a no go. Okay. So I would say that this highly depends on where you live in the country. If you live anywhere that has any sort of humidity within the year, I would always take your salt out of these containers that are, um, cardboard. Okay. If you keep it, if you are in a humid area, keep it in this and your safest is going to be in some sort of um, plastic or glass. Okay. And then, um, switched off. So original containers in a five gallon bucket, I put it away. Okay. And that's how I keep it. And if I'm living somewhere humid, anything with that's cardboard, I'm, I'm removing it and putting it in some sort of glass jar. Okay. Now some other ways that you can, um, do your salt. You see my everyday salt is put into a glass jar. Okay. It has a plastic lid because you want plastic. If you're going to do, um, glass jars, you're not going to want to put your regular canning lids on it. Okay. Because that the salt over time will corrode your, 
um, metal top. So it's okay. So keep plastic. Now this is just every day, but let's say you wanted to store it in glass or store it in um, some sort of container like a plastic jug. You can do that. You're going to make sure that whatever it is, you've washed it, you've cleaned it, sterilized it, it's super dry, and then you're going to add the salt to it and then put your caps back on. Now, if it's long, long term though, I'm probably going to do an extra barrier and tape the top of this or tape the top of this just as an extra barrier against humidity and stuff getting in. But my everyday stuff is just in regular jars like this on my shelf. Okay, another thing that people you can do is you can put it in Mylar bags and seal it up that way. Um, just keep in mind if you're doing Mylar bags or, or anything, even jars, there's no need to put, um, do not put oxygen absorbers in there, okay? Um, I know a lot of people are like, hey, you said airtight, oxygen absorber, take out the rest of the air. Don't do that because it just clumps up your um, salt and is gonna make it like a brick. Same thing in this, okay? The idea is just airtight. So you'll put it in this, you'll seal it up and you can keep it that way. But remember, if you're working with Mylar bags, again, you're putting this in a bucket, in a container, inside something so that critters can't get into it because critters can bite through this, okay? Um, so your best bet, get you some old juice bottles, some old water bottles, um, soda bottles, any kind of a bottle that you can clean, not any milk jugs, okay? A lot of people use milk jugs for stuff. Do not use milk jugs. You're gonna clean it out, dry it out, and then you can put your salt in there, but make sure it's dry. And then seal it up for long term, write salt on it, write the month and year that you put it. And then it's like almost anything else that we store, <coughs> you're going to be thinking about a cool, dark place that you can uh, put this salt, right? And a place that's not humid, okay? If it's humid where you live, you need to find the, the coolest, darkest place that you can possibly find. And then just make sure that you're doing the extra steps to really keep the moisture out, okay, as much as you can. You could even do a bucket, put stuff in small jars like this, and fill that bucket with the jars of salt. You could do the Mylar bags, fill the, the five-gallon bucket. Um, and then, of course, <clears throat> we have a ton of just the five-gallon buckets with just... And then I fill it with a variety of salt. So any bucket that you open up that says salt, it's going to have some kosher salt. It's going to have some pink salt. It's going to have some garlic salt. It's going to have some ice cream salt. It's going to have some pickling salt, right? It's going to have some different seasonings um, in there and salts in there. Majority is just your regular salts, but it's going to ha have a variety in it. And then we close it up and we're not going to get into that for a very, very long time, okay? And like I said, if it's a place that's got some humidity, even if it's a place that's um, pretty mild most of the year, <coughs> excuse me, but in the summer, you know that it is a location where you battle a lot of humidity. Okay, if I know that about where I'm going, I'm going to take whatever salts are that are on cardboard and put those in a different container before I put it in my five gallon bucket. Okay. And you need salt, you guys. I can't stress, okay? So think, just think about this, okay? <clears throat> One, we need it in our bodies to live, okay? You need salt. Second of all, if you're doing any kind of food preservation and like shit's hit the fan and you're trying to preserve food, you need salt for that. So if you're doing any kind of canning, pickling, fermenting, all that type of stuff, curing meats, different things like that, you're gonna need salt for those processes, okay, as well. So just think about that because it's a lot of salt when it comes down to it and it's it's got a very <coughs> important role, okay? So I need some water. I always come on camera without something to drink and, and I always die because of it. So I'll see you guys next time. Um, let me know in the comments how you store your, your salt and I'll see you guys next time, bye.